Welcome to the Christian Woman Leadership Podcast, where we hope to inspire you to embrace your God-given gifts, skills, and passions in order to lead with confidence. We want you to remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, and you are fully loved by Him. You have been designed on purpose by God with unique gifts and passions in order to love and lead those around you. I'm your host, Esther Littlefield, a pastor's wife, business owner, mom, and writer. And I'm Esther's co-host, Holly Kane. I'm a wife, mom, and business owner. I also write at hollycane.org, where I focus on my passion for women's ministry. Together, we chat about important issues that Christian women leaders face. In addition, we interview other women just like you who lead in various roles from church to community to business. Through this podcast, we offer you encouragement, tools, and resources to help you on your leadership journey. We are so glad you're here with us. Hey friend, and welcome to the Christian Woman Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Esther Littlefield, and today I am coming to you solo to share with you about the three traits that every leader needs. I believe that if you have these three traits, you will be a confident and effective leader. So I am so glad you're here with me. If you are a new listener, welcome to our community. I'm so glad you're here. And if you've been around for a while, again, I thank you for being a regular listener and for sharing about the podcast and spreading the word. So today I want to talk to you, like I said, about the three traits that you need to be an effective leader. And I wanted to share with you first a little bit about why I talk so much about confident leadership and why it matters to me and why it's kind of part of the tagline and the theme of this podcast. So one reason I talk about this idea of leading with confidence is that I know what it's like to struggle and not feel confident at all. I know what it feels like to sense God calling you to something, but not feeling sure about how to actually pursue it, or believing that you have something to offer or to share, but not having clarity around what your gifts and skills are, and so you tend to hold back. I know what it feels like to have a dream, but to put it on the shelf for a long time and think that probably it can just wait and nobody needs to hear about it right now. There's always a good reason, quote unquote, but it really is just excuses because you're afraid. Okay, maybe that's just me, but I'm pretty sure that some of you have felt that way too, because I hear it from a lot of the women that come into our community, whether it's joining my email list or coming into our Facebook group or sending messages. I hear these themes from many of you. And I want to share with you about one specific time that I felt this way. So I was in a room full of other church leaders, and everyone around me was sharing their thoughts about the way that they thought we should deal with a particular situation. And I had a different perspective, a unique one that I hadn't heard anyone share yet, but I was nervous to speak up. My heart was pounding and I felt that lump in my throat. You know, the feeling you get when you're supposed to say something, but you really don't want to because you're afraid. I kept thinking, who am I to provide this kind of insight? Who's going to listen to me? You know, I hadn't led a church. I hadn't been in this particular situation before. And I wasn't one of the official leaders in the room. And I wasn't 100% sure that my idea was the right direction to go. So I sat there and I kept thinking that I needed to be asked to share my input. Maybe I needed permission. Finally, I spoke up. I shared my thoughts. And to my surprise, the thoughts that I had were met with positive responses. And some of the ideas that I shared ended up being things that we took action on. And this was a turning point for me in my leadership journey because I realized that most of the time, no one is going to specifically call on me. You know, if I have an idea or a dream or a suggestion, I was going to need to step up and share it. And I realized that God has gifted me differently than other people in the room or in the group or the church, wherever I am. So holding back And pretending like I don't have something to share or to do or to say wasn't helping anyone. 
Since that time, God has taken me on a journey towards becoming a confident leader and stepping into my calling. And I've shared bits and pieces of that here on the podcast at various times. I have seen him do amazing things in my own heart and mind and change my thoughts, change my thinking. And I've seen how God has allowed me to step up and start to do things that I never would have dreamed being able to do growing up or even several years ago. So if you want to hear a little bit more about my journey towards becoming a confident leader, you can check out episode 68. I I go a little bit more in depth there. But now God has given me this passion to help other women. I want to help as many women as possible get out of that cycle of the doubt and the hesitation and the insecurity that holds us back. And I want you to be able to step up as an effective and confident leader. I truly believe that when we do this, we can change the world. But I want to make sure that I'm clear on this because this idea of leading with confidence is not about, quote unquote, living our best life or getting everything you dream of or just being fulfilled in your life. It's really about the ultimate mission that God has given us because God has given us very clear directions in his word about what we are to do here on earth. And if we are leading with confidence, we won't be held back from that mission by our own fear or by other people's doubt. So the ultimate goal of leading with confidence is so that other people can know and experience the love of God and the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. It's so that we can walk in the freedom that comes from God and help others do the same. It's so that we can reach our communities, we can effectively lead our families, and we can reach the world with the different gifts and passions and skills that God has given us. And we each can serve Him in our own unique ways. And this mission, this passion that God has given me, is really why I started the podcast. I wanted to help women like you be able to to embrace your gifts and lead with confidence. Since starting the podcast, my vision for what can happen has expanded. I want to create a community of women who are willing to go against the status quo, who are fully committed to shining the light of Christ, and who are willing to use their gifts and talents to lead others. And I've already been able to see that happen in many ways, which is so exciting. So today, maybe you're listening and you're wondering, what do I actually mean by becoming a confident leader? Or what are the traits that I need to have in order to walk as an effective leader? So that's what I want to share with you. I want to share with you three traits that I think are essential in leadership. Now, these are not the only things that we need, but I believe that these three traits are core to being an effective leader. So let me start with trait number one. Trait number one is confidence. If you want to be an effective leader, you need to have confidence. So I use that term confident leader because I think it's important to recognize that confidence is such an important trait in leadership. Can you be a leader without confidence? Yes, I I think someone can end up becoming a leader or being in a leadership position without confidence, because I believe it's possible to appear confident without actually possessing confidence. And it's possible to have plenty of gifts and skills that can move you forward into leadership without having the confidence that keeps you grounded. So that can create problems when someone is in a leadership role without confidence. So I have talked about this particular trait of confidence on the podcast quite a bit in the past. So I'm not going to go real deep here, but I will say this. The confidence that I'm talking about is not confidence that comes from leaning on yourself or your own abilities. Rather, it's confidence that comes from placing your full trust in God and knowing that he is the source of everything. He's the source of all of your abilities and your strength that you need to do whatever tasks he's put before you. So as a Christian woman, I want you to know and remember that confidence is not about you. It's about the God who lives in you. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, I want you to go back to episode six, where I first covered this topic 
of Leading with Confidence. And then you could go to episode 67, where I talk about five reasons that confidence makes you a more effective leader. And then episode 68, I go into what you need to know about becoming a confident leader. And I actually walk through the five stages of confident leadership. So you may have heard me before mention the quiz that I have that tells you what stage you're in. So you can find all of that and kind of get a better understanding of what I'm talking about in episode 68. And I also tell you in episode 68 that I don't believe you're ever going to necessarily arrive at, you know, full confidence in every area. It's a continual growth process and it's a change that will keep happening in you. But effective leaders will rest in the confidence that comes from God. So they won't be constantly swayed by other people's opinions and thoughts. So the question I want to ask you about this trait is, do you have confidence? Do you feel confident when you are in a leadership role or when you are leading your kids or your family or, you know, the community group that you're in? I want you to consider if you have confidence. All right. Trait number two is clarity. This is the next trait I think that effective leaders have. They are people who have clarity. So what exactly do I mean by clarity? And what do you need to have clarity about? So, you know, if you've listened to this podcast for a while, I often refer to the dictionary definition of a word because I like to make sure we are on the same page about what we're talking about. But clarity basically means clearness or lucidity as to perception or understanding and freedom from indistinctness or ambiguity. All right, so basically what that means is that a leader who has clarity is clear. They don't have a lot of confusion, a lot of second guessing, a lot of constantly changing back and forth. So what do we need to have clarity about? If we're a leader or we believe God might be calling us into a leadership role, what do we need to have clarity about? First, we need clarity about the truth of who God is and who he says we are. And this truth can be found when we dig into God's word, when we get to know him through the process of studying scripture, of getting in communion with him on a regular basis. So I believe that everything we do needs to be based on the truth of who God is. Otherwise, it's really easy for us to get off track as leaders. Second, we need clarity around the purpose God has for us. So getting clarity around your purpose can be a messy process, but it often involves getting clear on things like your gifts, your dreams, your strengths, your personality. And these things can help point you towards the unique purpose that God has for you. In addition, getting clarity around your purpose involves listening to the Holy Spirit. And it can also include times of waiting and allowing God to just work in you and listening for him to speak to you. So if you're interested in this idea of getting clarity on your purpose, then you can go back to episode 10. Now, Holly and I talk about this idea of finding your purpose, and we actually talk about how many of us get stuck here, and we give you a few thoughts on how to make sure you don't get stuck. So I'd encourage you, if you haven't listened to that episode, to go back and check it out. I also talk about some of the obstacles that keep us from pursuing our purpose in episode 93. And so that's a great one if you feel like you kind of know what your purpose is, but you feel like you've been holding back or running into obstacles to moving forward on it. All right. Third, you need clarity around who God is asking you to lead. So if you're a leader, that means you have people that you are leading in some capacity. And it's really important to make sure you know who those people are and who God has entrusted to you. In some cases, the number might be really small. And for others of you, it might be hundreds or even thousands of people. And so as we have shared before, the number of people we are leading is not what is important. What we do need to do is we need to be willing to serve faithfully in whatever capacity God has given us. We need to be willing to lead small and take that just as seriously as if we were leading 
a larger number of people. And really, there is increased weight and responsibility the more people you're dealing with. So I want to encourage you, if you are in a phase of leading small, to check out episode 113. Holly and I did that just a few weeks ago, where we talked about the value and the importance of leading small. So the question here on this trait for you is, do you have clarity? Are you clear on these three things that I just mentioned? All right, next trait is courage. That's trait number three. And I think that effective leaders are courageous leaders. They step out and do things even when they're afraid. Okay, so again, going back to a dictionary definition of courage, it's mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, or with, and withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. Okay, so courage is taking action on something that is difficult or scary, even when you're not sure about the outcome. It involves risk, and it also produces great reward. And another benefit of courage is that it will build confidence. So it kind of is very connected to the first trait that we already talked about. Because as you take action and you step out and do things, God will build that confidence in you. So every one of us in our lives, we will experience some circumstances that feel impossible. We will encounter times when God is calling us to something that might appear unsafe, or it may not make sense to us in human terms, or we just might feel like we're not cut out for what he's asking us to do. And we have a choice. In some situations, we have a choice. We can allow fear to stop us, or you know, we can actually step out and face the fear and do it anyway, or do it afraid, as some people say. So courage will set you apart from other leaders. If you have this trait, courage is going to allow you to do things that other people might run away from. There's a quote that I've had up in my office for years, and it reminds me of the source of courage. It's from Beth Moore, and I believe it's from her Bible study that she did on the book of Esther. It says, courage comes from a heart that knows it is loved. And as a Christian leader, when you are confident in God's love for you, it's much easier to step out and be courageous. So courage is not static. It implies and involves taking action. The way that you build courage is by one small baby step at a time. Usually we don't become courageous overnight, and we don't become courageous just by thinking about courage. We actually have to take steps of faith. And the more you do this, the more you will see God being faithful and showing up and providing for you and showing you the next step that you need to take. And then the bigger steps of faith become easier because you have built up that courage. So my question for you in this trait is, do you have courage? Are you acting with courage in your life or is fear holding you back? All right, friend, I hope this short episode was helpful for you. You know, we talked about the trait of confidence. We talked about the trait of clarity and the third trait of courage. These three traits will help you to be an effective and confident leader. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I am on a mission to help as many women as possible become confident leaders. It's why I started this podcast. And I want to see more of you stepping into exactly what God has for you so that you can shine the light of Christ, so that you can share the gospel and make disciples in whatever unique setting or whatever way God calls you to do. So that's why not only did I start the podcast, but I also created what's called the Confident Leader Catalyst Program. And this past spring, I had my first round of women go through it, and it was an amazing experience with that group. We had such an amazing time together, growing and learning together, and watching the women take these steps and put things into practice was incredible. And I am really excited to be able to offer that opportunity to join for the fall round very soon. So the Confident Leader Catalyst, if you haven't heard me mention it before, it's a step-by-step program that will take you 
from hesitant, confused, and stuck to confident, clear, and ready to take action. We will dive deep into helping you become a leader who has these three traits, confidence, clarity, and courage, so that you can step out of your comfort zone and into your calling. So if this sounds of interest to you at all, if you're even slightly curious about this idea, then head to confidentleadercatalyst.com. And if you're listening in real time, you'll see the wait list so you can hop on the wait list. Or if you're listening when the program happens to be open, you'll get the details about the program and everything on that page. Now, when you join the wait list, if you're joining at the wait list time, I will also send you my free Renew Your Mind guide, which has 12 mindset shifts that will help you become a confident leader. Because as I mentioned, one of the things that has been huge for me is changing my thoughts around some of the things that I have believed over the years. And so I will send you some things that are going to help you start to shift your thoughts based on biblical principles and actual scriptures that will help you meditate on the truth rather than the falsehoods that you may be believing. All right, now I'm just wrapping up with a personal note. If you are listening to this episode in real time, then this coming Friday, September 11th, is my birthday, and I am turning 40. And I actually love celebrating. So if you listened last year around this time, Holly and I probably talked about the idea that I I celebrate birthday month. So I love to celebrate all month long. And it would mean a lot to me if you took a moment sometime this week to share this episode on your social media and just go ahead and tag me and mention how this conversation impacted you. Or even if it's a different episode, that would be great too. Or you can shoot me a private message on my Facebook page or Instagram or post in the Facebook group and just share it with me if this podcast has impacted you in some way. I would so appreciate that. I'll put the links for all the social places where you can find me in the show notes. So be sure to check that out. You can go to estherlittlefield.com slash episode 116 for the show notes. All right, friend, thank you so much for being here today, for listening, and for being a part of this podcast community. I hope that this episode encourages you to move forward into becoming a confident leader. I truly appreciate you, and I want you to know and remember that your leadership matters. All right, friend, I'll talk to you next week. Hi, friend. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Christian Woman Leadership Podcast. We're so glad you took the time out of your day to listen, and I truly hope that it made an impact on your ability to lead well. If it did, would you consider sharing this episode with a friend? You could take a screenshot of the episode and share it on your social media, maybe an Instagram story or on Facebook, or you could just text the link to a friend. We would truly appreciate that as when you share with a friend, it helps spread the word about the podcast and it helps more women to be able to be impacted so that they can lead and love others well. Now, don't forget your leadership matters and it's time for you to embrace your gifts and lead with confidence. 